Hello and welcome. Now for the whole of 2020, I was doing a no buy slash low buy. Now this is my final video for the year. We're going to wrap it all up, sum it all up, the grand finale. We're going to share all of the information, all of the data I've collected throughout the year because I literally wrote down every single thing I spent money on to the dollar and cents amount um, and kept track of everything, including how many products I used up, how many gifts I was given, how many hand-me-downs I received from friends, like all of the information and of course how much I spent in each category, how much I made for the whole year and therefore the grand total of how much money I was able to save. I am so excited to film this video to share it with you if you're going to do a no buy, low buy, you are doing one. I hope that this can be encouraging in some way. I got so much out of this challenge. I really, really enjoyed myself. I'll link for you the video where I talk about some of the benefits I've experienced. We're continuing on into 2021 with this challenge and I love this challenge. It was a great year, despite the fact that 2020 was like the biggest curveball in my lifetime at least. Um, let's get in. I'm not gonna be super detailed or specifically reflective just because this video is gonna be long enough just talking about the information. So the first area is the amount of products I used up for the year. At the very beginning of the year, I set a little section aside of the toiletries I wanted to get through and I managed to get through all of them and some. So I used a total of 40 products up. Now, most of these were toiletry related. Um, one or two cosmetic items and then there was a few stationary things and stuff like that but pretty much all of that was toiletries I then had to go on and obviously purchase and replace a lot of those, so we'll get into that in a minute. The next area I want to talk about is gifts. I received a total of 22 items from family and friends and things like that throughout the year. Um, yeah, very fortunate to be able to receive those things and yeah, I've kept all of those items. They've all served me value in some way. I think most people who are in my life that would give things to me know exactly what to get me because either I've specifically said it or because they just know me quite well. So anyway, um, that was a part of it. And like, you know, I didn't use the gifts gift section to like say, hey, can you give me this as a gift so I can like not do my no buy low buy or like get around the system that I've created for myself. These were just genuine gifts that people gave me. The next was hand-me-downs. I took a total of 28, no, 26 hand-me-downs. Um, so these were just from like friends who were decluttering. I took quite a few big comfy t-shirts because I don't really have pajamas or like lazy around the house clothes. So I did take quite a few of them from some friends. However, out of 26 hand-me-downs, I passed on about eight of those items. So like when someone's getting rid of something and you can get it for free, you usually take more than you actually need. And this happened with me, like I took more than I needed and I wasn't gonna use some of the items that I did take from the big declutter piles. Um, so I then donated eight of those items myself. The next area and probably one of the biggest telling areas of course of how successful or not so successful this challenge was for me this year was the new items I purchased with my own money. I went to the store, I bought the things. This is the total that I now have. So for the whole year I purchased a total of 79 items. Now that's quite a lot. It's still pretty good in comparison to what pre my previous year is, which I'll talk about that um, in a minute. However, out of the 79 items, 21 of them were consumables. So these are toiletry items. This isn't even including makeup. This is literally just like shampoo, conditioner, toothpaste, toothbrush, toothbrush like um, face oil, like a cleanser. Like these are the things that I purchased. And this year, um, I did buy, oh, we'll get into that, that's another section. So anyway, so 79 um, items minus 21, which are the consumables, gives me a total of 58 items that are like physical things that aren't like face and like toiletry products pretty much. So for the whole year, I'm pretty happy that 58 is the total that I have brought into my life. Quite a few, well, not quite a few, but there's a good couple of items there that were essential purchases and that I was going to make and I'm glad that I did make. Um, so, I worked out previously, half of 2018 
as well as the whole year 2019 how many items I purchased during that time. So for a year and a half I usually had purchased 282 items. Now I worked that out to be uh, equivalent to a year. So for one year before doing a no buy low buy I was purchasing around 188 items not including consumables. So to go from 188 being what my average was for probably 2019 down to 58 is just really awesome. Like that speaks for itself in terms of how I guess successful this challenge has been. It really, really has helped me to reduce my random impulse shopping, getting things on whims, on spurs, like for whatever reason, justifying random home decor that I don't really need anyway, like all these things and all this hard work that I've put into this challenge has paid off because I've decreased the amount of things I would have purchased by 73%, which is awesome. So that was one figure that I worked out to really, yeah, indicate, I guess, how much I've not bought, if that makes sense. So yeah, anyway, pretty happy with those. Now we're gonna move on to the section where um, it was like all my rules. So the things that I said that I wouldn't buy um, throughout 2020 and how well I did or did not stick to that. So the first category is clothing. I purchased a total of no, nine items, although I wasn't planning to purchase any. Six cardigans, two pairs of swimmers, one dress. I probably could have done with only like four cardigans, the other and um, maybe only one pair of swimmers. However, I don't really regret any of those purchases and I'm quite happy with those items, even though it was somewhat of a break of the challenge. The next categories was decor, bedding, homeware, furniture. I purchased zero, none in any of those items, so that was, uh, any of those categories rather, so that was a really good success. The next area was kitchenware. I did purchase five items. I went through a hobby of baking this year around lockdown. Um, I kind of got really into it. I purchased all the baking things plus a mixer, which was in the appliance, so that was six items. I got a lot of use out of it for like one or two months and then I kind of stopped following through with that hobby. You know when you take on a hobby and it just it just doesn't last doesn't last the time and you kind of just stop using the things. So that was one of those things and I guess I do regret those purchases and that's maybe more just because I'm being lazy and I'm not forcing myself to bake. But I probably didn't need to buy a mixer and I could have maybe bought less baking things than I actually did. Sorry, we're not doing detail, my bad, let's move on. <laughs> the next is jewelry, accessories, bags, and purses, zero. I purchased none of those items. Shoes, I did purchase one pair, it was work boots, so I don't particularly count it as a break of my no buy just because I needed them for work. I needed the support, I needed the protection, I was moving wheelchairs around, if that fell on my foot, that just wouldn't be a fun time. So I did buy one pair of shoes, but no other shoes that weren't work related. The next was trinkets and souvenirs. I purchased none because no one could go anywhere and there was nothing to take a souvenir of because I was just working throughout the whole year. <laughs> the next was books. I purchased no hard cover, hard copy, physical books, no audiobooks, however I did purchase three ebooks. Um, I'm very happy with that because they were uh, they were new release books and all books that I didn't have access to and I wanted to learn more about that information. So they were worthwhile purchases and I do not regret at all. Um, in fact, I've made space for ebook purchases of this kind in my 2021 rules because I actually really felt like that was important. The next area was stationery. This is often a huge problem area for me. However, this number's gonna sound a lot, but I'll explain it in a second. I purchased 11 stationery items. Now, I purchased whiteout, an ink cartridge, a ream of paper, one notebook, and a pack of clips to organize my tax receipts. All of those were essential purchases for work related items. I then bought six pen refills. I probably only needed to get one or two, however, they're gonna last the time, so I just bought extra at that moment because I was in the store that's usually like an hour and a half away to get to it. So, I don't know, it's a bit iffy, but in general I'm really happy about that because like, usually I would buy a lot of unnecessary stationery items because stationery just brings me a lot of joy. <laughs> the next area is craft supplies. So, 
In my six month update, I had eight balls of yarn in my craft supplies of things I'd purchased and I said that I regretted a couple of those. However, since then, I've turned all of the yarn that I did purchase into gifts for other people. So I did take it out of my craft category and put it into more gifts because ultimately like that's why I bought the yarn anyway. And I didn't really think that through, but because I did turn all those things into things for other people, I put it into the gifts area and I put the expenses into gifts for other people as well. So. I don't have the yarn anymore, but I do have two other items I purchased in craft supplies, which was laminating paper and card paper to make my cash envelopes for my budgeting system. The next area was cosmetics and makeup. I got one concealer, one eyeliner, one eyeshadow palette, and two brushes, so that was a total of five items. And yeah, I'm really happy with those. The concealer was a replacement, the eyeliner was a new thing, and the palette and brushes was new. However, I've really enjoyed having a little bit of makeup this year, and I've really, yeah, it's been fun. Like, if I go out for dinner, or like, usually when I sit down to film a video now, I try and make my eyes pop so I look a little bit more put together. Um, the next is toiletries. So I purchased a total of 20 toiletries throughout the year. Three toothpaste, three toothbrushes, two sunscreens, one shampoo, one conditioner, one deodorant, one cleanser, two hyaluronic acids, which is like a face moisturizing thing, four rosehip oils for face oil, one bar of soap, avocado oil as a body moisturizer. Those were all the toiletries that I repurchased and I don't really regret any of those. There is a few more rosehip oils than I need just because they were on sale, so I have them for the coming year, but everything in there was a good purchase this year I really got into actually taking care of my skin and cleansing my face um, and having a bit of a routine around that which has been really lovely just to sort of take care of myself and say that like I care about myself enough to wash my face each night which previously hasn't always been the case. Um, the next area are a few things that were not on my no buy low buy list for 2020 However, they are areas that I then purchase things in throughout the year, which have now been included in my 2021 rules because of these said purchases. So tech slash gadgets, I bought a total of six items, one phone case, one phone holder for in the car, one speaker, one phone adapter, and two hard drives. Probably didn't really need the speaker, although that has been really fun with one of my clients. Um, and the hard drives were quite expensive. But yeah, I don't really need any other tech now. I feel like I have the little things that I did need to get during 2021. So I probably won't need to get anything for 2020. No, 2020, 2021. Ah, uh, it's confusing. The next area is games. I purchased a total of two throughout the year. Laundry, I purchased a total of four items. This was quite a high ticket item, however, I really love this lingerie. It's really beautiful. It makes me very, very happy. And now I have a nice little collection. I don't feel like I need any more in 2021. Pleasure products, I purchased a total of three. Two of them I really like, one of them I really love. And the third one I gave to someone else because I didn't really get a lot out of it personally. So those were some items that I were also high ticket items that I purchased. I purchased three reusable pads and then I purchased six random miscellaneous items that I didn't really know what to categorize them in because it was delicate wash bag, two face cloths, one, one bottle of iron tablets, one pouch, one packet of socks. So I had to get socks for my work boots because the socks I already had didn't work with my work boots. But anyway, so those are all the things, all the numbers. Um, so let's move on to the next area is the money. We're gonna talk about all that. So throughout the year, whenever I've spoken about my income and how much I've made, I've always spoken about it in terms of gross, except for when I did my six month update, I talked about it more clearly there. So that just means that I hadn't taken out taxes or certain business expenses associated to when I work. So the money, the total amount that I have made now is the net income. This is how much I have taken home that has landed in my account that hasn't gone to the tax man and some other different random business things. Now I'm self-employed so I do get paid quite well because I'm not working for an agency. I'm not going through a third party that takes a cut of my money. It comes directly to me. I do have to manage my own finances in terms of I'm responsible for my own superannuation, which is like retirement. I'm responsible for doing my own taxes. If someone is to cancel work with me, there is no guarantee that I get other work. If I'm sick, I don't get any sick pay. All these things, um, it's kind of a risk, but the risk means that I get more money because of that. 
but that's because of the risk, if that makes sense. And I do disability support work, so that's a job that I do. I absolutely love that job. I am very, very fortunate to have some amazing clients who play me very generously as well. So anyway, with that all said, my grand total, my net income, exactly how much is my take home pay for 2020 was a total of $84,668.18. So that is it. It's kind of, it was a bit confusing to calculate because obviously the financial year is different to the year year because the financial year like cuts in the middle. Just telling you, it took me a long time to calculate this, but we got there. Um, the next area, so, I made a total of $84,668.18. The amount that I spent on all of my expenses, everything added up, um, was a total of $24,259.21. So that is the grand total of everything I spent. Therefore, the amount, the grand savings amount for the whole year was $60,408.97. So that's incredible that I was able to save that much money. I am so fortunate and grateful that I was able to save in a year where that just wasn't the case for so many people. Um, 2020 was rough and the fact that I also did a no buy low buy during this year in the year where I've probably made the most amount of money I've ever made in my life has just like worked very well. They teamed up nicely so that I was able to save a lot because yeah, previously I've worked in restaurants and things like that where I've never been able to make this much money. So if I, I did the percentage math, that means I saved a total of 71.35% of my income for the year, which is awesome. Super, super stoked with that. Now let's talk about how much I spent and break down all the areas in which I spent money. So first we've got gas. I'm just going to read them in the order that I usually read it for the monthly update. So we've got gas for $2,460.41. Um, that's how much I spent for the year. I then spent $1,277.87 for car maintenance. So that's how much my car costs to run and keep going and that's kind of an essential item for me being able to work. The next area was groceries for $2,659.29. So that's how much it cost me to eat from the grocery store. Eating out with friends was $1,994.29. 59 cents so I'm just so happy that my eating out with friends budget was came under less than how much I spent on groceries that was kind of my biggest goal for the year because eating out is a big problem area and in previous years I've just constantly bought snacks and random drinks and all these kind of unnecessary purchases while I've been out this year I did make the intention to at least when I eat out it's probably like a sit-down meal and it's usually only ever when I'm with a friend like I'll, I do not eat out by myself because I just feel like if I have that if I allow myself to do that I buy all kinds of random snacks that I don't actually need the next is things all the items I talked about previously I spent a total of two thousand eight hundred and three dollars and eighty cents like I said I had the lingerie hard drives my speaker oh and the pleasure products they were all quite high ticket items I think you know that would have been like over a grand worth of those things, maybe a grand, yeah, a grand and a half, I would say, on just those items alone. And then everything else was different things that just added up. The next was my cat. I spent $434.77 on her. Um, bills, I spent a total of $7,150. This was just... Um, it's always going to be the highest category, I think, for most people. I am super fortunate that it's obviously quite low because... I'm staying in the childhood home I grew up in. I pay my mum some rent. It's $100 a week. It's not a lot. I do pay my own internet and phone and things like that. However, it's very, very minimal compared to other people. I think if I was in a more of a normal renting situation, I'd be probably putting another 10 grand at least towards that in terms of rent. So yeah, I've been very fortunate and I think that's been obviously something that has contributed to the fact that I've been able to save just over $60,000. I think it would be more like $45,000 if I wasn't, 45000 to 50000 if I wasn't paying so little rent as I am. The next is gifts. I spent a total of $2,918.89. Experiences, um, I spent a total of $325 and 85 cents so that was like movie tickets and things like that which <laughs> experiences was very low this year and that's what made me realize I haven't taken a holiday 
at all this year. I haven't even taken like a weekend off or like consciously booked time to go away or anything like that. I've had weekends off just because that's how my schedule worked out. But I haven't gone away, I haven't done anything and that's probably because of COVID because often I usually, I don't take vacations and then I will go traveling for like, you know, a couple of weeks in the year, but I didn't do that this year. So my experience category is really, really low. And obviously I wasn't able to go to like music gigs or festivals or anything like this. Um, the next was eating out with my client. I spent a total of $498.85. So this is some kind of lazy spending because there were times where I forgot to bring my lunch or I just didn't because I couldn't be bothered. But then in general, a lot of that is actually intentional money I'm spending to sit down and have a meal with them. The other area is miscellaneous. I spent a total of $358.89. I think that was like a haircut, some random transport, some postage, just some really weird things that I didn't know what category to put them in. My computer, I spent $575 on it at the beginning of the year, it broke, I needed to fix it. Laser was, I spent um, $191 on laser hair removal. My dentist, I spent $170 to get my teeth cleaned and checked at some point during the year. Physio, I spent $440 because I did my back in working during the COVID time, I overworked myself because I was taking on shifts that other people were cancelling and I should have just said no and because I didn't, I physically had to pay with that because I was lifting a wheelchair all the time and then I did my back in. So that wasn't fun and I'm still dealing with the consequences of that. The next thing I've done, so those are all expenses, that's it all broken down, is I worked out how much of my spending was essential and how much of it was non-essential. So I worked out that I spent about, I spent exactly, rather, not about, this is me, let's be real, I do these numbers pretty, pretty on point to the sense. I spent a total of $15,416.75. This was on all essential spending. Um, so that was like gas, groceries, car maintenance, bills, my dentist, my physio, my computer, those are the things I deemed like essential. And then in terms of eating out, the things I purchased, some like experiences, um, I don't know, like laser hair removal wasn't really essential. I spent a total of $5,923.58. Now, the thing I didn't really know which category to put it into was gifts. I spent a total of $2,918.80. Nine cents. Some of that was a donation to a charity. I also just like gave Christmas presents and birthday presents to people throughout the year. Um, so I, were, I I decided to put gifts in as essential because I feel like that's important. That's an important part of having an income, having an income where you feel comfortable to be generous and you're in the position to do that. Like I think it is an essential when you're at that point in your finances. So. That means about 75 point something percent of my spendings, of the spendings I did in total through the year was on essential spendings. And then I spent 24.4% on non-essential spending. So pretty much if I just stuck to the basics, I probably could have saved an extra 5,000, an extra $6,000 give or take. However, I didn't. I'm not really worried about that. I'm not really fussed. I had a really good year. I felt like this no buy was really great. It didn't limit me so much that I felt frustrated. I really constantly kept myself in a positive mindset, kept myself focusing on the progresses rather than the setbacks and just having flexibility, finding my healthy balance with it. And I think because I did that, I got so much out of it and I am genuinely really excited to continue for 2021. So, Whew, I've just talked for I don't know how many minutes straight and I'm exhausted. I am losing my voice, but I'm so glad that we have now done this video that I've shared all those numbers. I hope that it can be encouraging or supportive in some way if you're thinking about doing a no buy, low buy. I've loved this. I really love the community that's come around my channel because of this challenge as well. And just thank you. Thank you to everyone who watched those updates, who followed my journey. And yeah, if anyone's sticking around for 2021, I'm really excited to do this with you as well. Um, and yeah, it's going to be interesting. My income's going to change dramatically. It's going to be a very different scenario that I'm in, but I'm looking forward to it just as much just as the same or I don't know what I'm trying to say but anyway thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time bye